Welcome to Kempo University. My name is Al Babinick, and we're going to be working on hopping crane, which is that little hopping part in long five right after the second side of the backbreaker. We're going to actually do a two part version of this just because it's a little bit longer. Okay, so this is going to be a two part series, and the first part's going to be on hopping crane, what it's about. The second part is going to be what it is, how it fits in the system that type of thing. So stick around for the second part of this also. Now just to let you know, I never knew it had a name uh, before I started talking with Mr. Planis, but it's called Hopping Crane. Hopping Crane is really not a technique all by itself. It's just a little motion showing us about the crane principle and how it fits in with the system. So. It's a category completion bit, but it's also a little food for thought, and you can use it. It's just not a technique all by itself. As we're going through, I have three lines set up. Now, the katas relate back and forth to each other, all right? When we did long three, we had three lines, okay? We have three train tracks in long three, but it was full stances. So it was a horse, line, line, and horse, line, line. So the other line would have been here, so I was dealing with three lines, but they were a stance apart. Now, we're dealing with three lines, but it's within one stance. So this is basically a half a stance for this middle line, okay? Now, hopping crane is right after the left-hand side or the opposite side of the backbreaker, and you're coming off of it. So I wanna show you the motions first, and then I'm gonna show you the application or one of the applications uh, in katas, remember we have, uh, I'm not sure of the exact Japanese pronunciation, but it's bunkai. So bunkai is discovery. It means you're looking at your katas and you're trying to figure things out. So I'm going to give you one example, and then you can run off and try to think of, you know, 15 other ways that you could do this. I'm starting pretty much on this line. So I finished the back breaker. I'm left foot, left foot forward facing 130. So if you're not sure how to start this. So I just finished doing the double downward palm in the back breaker. As I come up, I twist. Now I'm on this line. And honestly, you're doing a counterbalance with your hands. I'm more worried about the feet right now, just to let you know. So my hands would be on this side. I step up the line, and then I'm going to hop. So there's a hopping knee, and I put my foot on this line. Then when I sweep, it's a sweep to the corner. I do my counterbalance, sweep to the corner, kick. When I come back, I land on this line. And then I step up on this line, hop, plant back to the middle, sweep, sweep, and land back on this line. When I come back around, I'm turned my back to you, sorry, but I'm back on my original line. And that's what we want. I'm gonna do it from back here a little bit. So you're down here, twist. Hop, put your foot down, sweep, kick, put your foot down. Hop, put your foot down on the line, sweep, kick, twist, put your foot down the line. When you unwind, you drag your right foot to your cat stance, so you're facing right back down the same line you started on. Okay, this is the bunkai part, right? Bunkai. Uh, this is how to take care of somebody if they're on their hands and knees in front of us. Okay, so I don't know how you got the guy there. It could have been dance of death, crushing hammer, whatever. He's down there. I'm just gonna do it from the point of view of the kata, but in application, you may have gotten him down here a different way. Who cares how? So I'm left foot forward, facing 130. I do my double downward palms from backbreaker. So I do the twist, I do the step, and then as I do my hop, I get my foot in position, and my hands are still on this side. I'm going to use counterbalance on the sweep, and then I'm going to just leave my hands there. So I counterbalance, and then boom, kick, and then I'm going to cross out if I was doing the technique. Now, if I was doing the kata, I'd go to this line, then up to this, then up this line. I'd do the rest of the kata. But it's kick, twist, and then I'd probably just cross out, and that's what I did. So. When we're doing this, it's counterbalance on the sweep, boom, and keep your hands down there for the actual kick. 
Okay. When we're going from the second side of Leap of Death, we do three on line, which we do the twist, the stomp, and then we step out into the third, and you're going on a line. When we're doing Hopping Crane, we're also doing three on line, because we're here, we do the twist on the line, the step on the line, and the hop on the line. So we have three on line going sideways, and we have three on line going forward and backwards, so horizontally and vertically as we're going through. So there's some three on line for you. So when you think about hopping crane, it's not called hopping crane just because you're doing the crane stance in there. It's also hopping crane because you're doing the crane principle. Now when we did leaping crane, we learned the crane principle, which is you're striking on the way to a chambered position. You're striking on the way to a chambered position for the, re for the rest of the technique in leaping crane. When we're doing hopping crane, from here, as you hop off, I'm striking on the way to a chambered position so I can get my kick in there. So it has a couple of different meanings as you look at hopping crane. Stick around for the second part where we'll see how it works with the extension of Crushing Hammer and Dance of Death. Thank you for watching this video production from Kempo University.